guys, today we get to talk about some cards that may have surprising values. Let's start with Expedition Map from Zendikar. This card is only a common. Zendikar was a fantastic set value-wise. There obviously was the Zendikar Fetch Lands. Chandra at one time was very, very expensive. And overall, the set was a great set with many unique abilities, including Landfall which was incredible. Uh, Battle for Zendikar, in my opinion, didn't quite capture the exploration, the uniqueness of the set, but um, Expedition Map, great card. It's about $2.34 as a common. It is around $11 plus as a foil. The great part about these cards was strictly they could be, they were even more valuable as foils than they were as a regular card. And you even had the full art lands. And if you bought booster boxes initially, you had the ability to pull something called priceless treasures, which was very valuable. You could even pull a black lotus, which is kind of cool. Talking about lotuses, Lotus Veil, vale, I love this card. It is on the reserve list. It has lotus in its name. It's semi-playable in EDH, but it doesn't have to be amazing in EDH to see a price spike. It just has to be good. Uh, one of the unique abilities, it is easy to go infinite with it, or relatively easy for a land, meaning you can, if you can untap it for less than three mana, if you can untap it for one or two, then this goes infinite quite easily, and as a land, very difficult to stop. I love this card. It is still relatively cheap today. It is no longer the $5 card. It's $8.50, but it has all the right markings on it. A, it says Lotus in its name. B, it's from an old set. C, it's on a reserve list. And D, it is a land. So I do expect this card to eventually pick up the question of when. It's a question of when, not if. This card will go up in price. All right, let's talk about a card we have not seen in some time, and it is Battle Skull. Battle Skull from New Phyrexia, there was a time you could get this for around $8. It is a fantastic card, $20 in a regular non-foil and $30 in foil. I like it, but... It's kind of as a speculation, I would just go for broke and spec on Stoneforge Mystic instead because that is what actually you... Obviously, Stoneforge Mystic was unbanned from Modern. Then this card goes up, 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 up in a way. And one of the reasons it is banned is because of Battle Skull. Now, these swords, I feel like are okay with Stoneforge Mystic. They are just relatively slow, and that's not what you want to be doing against Death Shadow. Removal is very good, so the swords, while good, you have many different types of removal out there. Path to Exile, and Black Removal, Red Removal, Lightning Bolt. There's just too many things, and if you're sacrificing your turn to play a sword, and then next turn attaching the sword, you're giving up two turns to be blown out by pretty much any removal spell, assuming it doesn't have protection from it. All right, let's talk about this card. We have, wow, we have not talked about this card in some time. It started at a $10 card, and now it is an $81 card. Very good in Boggles, very good in ED8s. Overall, it is a $165 foil. They need to reprint this card. I hope they reprint it as a rare, although they will probably reprint it as a mythic. I fully expect this card to be in either Iconic Masters, although I don't consider it Iconic, or Magic 25th Anniversary because it is a land over $80. Uh, the other card I expect to see is Rishon Port. I expect to see both of them very soon. There's just not much value otherwise, and when you're trying to do a set where it's all reprints and the values are already known, so the interesting part about a all reprint set like Iconic Masters or Modern Masters 2017, all the values already have some type of data on them. They're not new cards that are that may or may not like Tragic Slip, um, not Tragic Slip, <laughs> Fatal Push. Fatal Push, 
you don't really know that it could be an $8 uncommon. But yeah, it is an $8 uncommon. Next, Chalice of the Void. Wow, I remember this card was super bad when it first came out. Like, incredibly bad to the point that if people drafted it, they would just leave it on the table. Now it's super great. Uh, it is a $81 foil. Sorry, $81 regular and a $101 foil. You might ask, huh, why is there such a small price difference? Well, it was reprinted in one of the Modern Masters, so the foil version of it is actually not that hard to get a hold of. That being said, this is another card I fully expect to see reprinted. Uh, I don't know if it's iconic. I don't know if it's like a 25th anniversary type of deal. I just know that it's an $81 card and there's not that much value. They got to put value in the reprint set. They cannot hide behind the excuse of, oh, we didn't know, right? Every card is reprinted. Therefore, every card has a attached value today. Now, the other thing I want to point out on this card is it does have a very nice masterpiece version of it. All right, next card, we have Frexen Unlife. This was the definition of bulk. You couldn't even sell it for like 20 cents. You couldn't even sell it for 5 cents. It was bulk. However, whenever you have something that says you don't lose the game for having zero life or less, that is very, very good. Now, why is this card of interest today? Well, you can only lose if you have zero or less life, all damage is dealt to you as though it has infect. What if things didn't have infect? What if you couldn't get counters, including infect counters? This card becomes super great in EDH. I've always liked it with Malera. Malera has always been one of my favorite cards, as you guys know. And after I get some file layer alters, which I'll show you, uh, I will actually, so Brian is working on some file layer alters, the four seasons again. So I already have a set, but I will get another set of Malera's because I do love my Princess Malera. And I do play Phyrexian on life in the combo. It's not a bad combo. It's not a great combo, but it's not bad. All right, Magnus of the Wheel a okay card it is from commander 2015 one of the more surprising cards that have gone up in price the most surprising one i've left at the end because oh my goodness it was so obvious and it finally went up but this one i like uh it is a old commander 2015 once commander 2017 comes out which is in august i believe then 2016 becomes oh 2016 has already stopped being printed but 2015 it's an interesting set in terms of where the value is. There's not that much value in it in terms of the overall set, but there are some cards that are very, very good. And this is a $5 card that most people don't know is a $5 card. One of the interesting things about bulk, and when people sell bulk to the store, and I know this because uh, the store tries to sell bulk to me, they throw anything in EDH Commander that's not a recognizable Planeswalker or a known card of value. They just put it in bulk. So this card, while $5.50, you will find it in bulk just because. All right, let's talk about Captain Sisse, one of my favorite cards. And I do have a foil version of her, which is good. That's a plus. But she went from pennies to $17.00 plus legends and legendary cards will only get better tutoring for them once a turn is really good demonic tutor is amazing but not having to pay for demonic tutor every turn but just tapping your legend and your commander having the ability the, to play her as your commander so you always know you have the tutoring ability and you're not really adversely affecting your opponent so if you're a multiplayer people think oh, okay whatever I have more important stuff to worry about. You're gaining A, card advantage, B, card selection, and C, you're repeating this every single turn. Like, think about what's happening here. Your tu demonic tutoring, the only restriction is you have to pick a legend or legendary card, which is fine because there's plenty of really good ones and they tend to be stronger anyway in idiots. And you're tutoring every single turn. 
The fact that recently this was like a dollar or like 50 cents or something like that. No, no. I will say I do own lots of copies of her because I do like her. I've always liked her, uh, but I didn't expect her to ever go up in price. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I've collected her to collect her. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.